Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a very simple red, black, and white abstract painting. Okay, now the abstract art I'm going to show you today is very simple, and I only made it using paint and a rubber squeegee. So I'm going to show you that in just a second. So let me show you the finished product before we get into the process, because I've got it reported here. Um, so this is the finished piece. Ugh. Um, it's on, so you, it's hard to see. I know my lighting is terrible and I do apologize. That is the magic of fluorescent lighting, everyone. But here it is. So this, again, is terrible lighting, but this is the finished piece. Very hard to kind of see. Uh, you'll see it at the end of the video when I switch over to my, uh, my table, whatever you want to call it. So anyway, uh, yeah, so essentially, again, this is a red, black, and white abstract art piece. Um, it is, so the, let me talk about the materials real quick before I, sh I, I switch over. So first off, what you saw, that was watercolor paper. It was Canson, I believe is the brand. Um, it's got like a blue cover. Um, if I can find a link to it, I'll put it in the description. If I don't have one, then you just have to find it at either your local art store or online. Um, but it's canvas water paper, watercolor paper. Now, the paint I actually used, I mean, I always use gloss enamel. Most of the paint is Dun Edwards, red and white, but the black paint is actually uh, Glidden. It was a high gloss uh, black paint that was on sale that I found at Walmart. It was like $7 for a whole quart, uh, which I thought was a great deal. And I started using it and then it just reminded me of why I only use the paint that I use. But if you're looking to make abstract art with gloss enamel or with house paint, um, this is something you can do. And you'll see that in the video uh, after this. Last, um, I only used a rubber squeegee. Uh, you'll see it in the video as well. Uh, basically just a small rubber squeegee that I used. I literally, I think I got it from the dollar store, from like a dollar. So literally, the probably the whole most expensive part out of this is the paper because the watercolor paper, a sh like a stack of it, like the, the little reams that they come in, they're not usually cheap. They're probably like 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars, just depending on the size that you get, the brand that you get and how many sheets come in each one. Anywhere from probably twenty to fifty dollars, just depending on the sizes and how many come in in, in a ream. Um, so that's probably the most expensive part. But you can get the high gloss paint. Um, I use Dun Edwards, but that's not available throughout the U.S. Or I don't even know if they're available outside the U.S. I think they are, but regardless, um, I use I I go to a local paint store and get the paints made there. I just get high gloss, not semi gloss, but high gloss. So even even a step beyond semi-gloss um, and that is the type of paint that I will be using today. So just so you have an idea of what I use to make this this piece um, and that's pretty much it. So we'll go ahead and head over to the table now and you'll see it uh, you'll, you'll see the kind of the whole process um, as a, a volt very simple to make but it looks very cool uh, in the end so let's head over. Hey everyone Cody here and you already saw the intro so I won't uh, I won't go into the intro stuff um, but yeah so here today we're, I'm going to show you how I made that uh, red black and white abstract painting now this painting was actually super easy for me to make and I really enjoyed it it looked very simple um, and it is simple now the painting itself was very simple as far as the technique but also it has like that minimalist look and it's funny because i made one of these paintings um on another piece actually behind me that was red white and black and on that painting i had done the same thing but i couldn't remember exactly the steps that i had taken to create the painting itself so i was very frustrated so this is actually the culmination of multiple attempts to be able to figure out how it was that I made that painting that I liked a lot. So today, the black that I'm using is actually a Glidden paint that I got on sale at, at Walmart that was, uh, it's, a, it's a high gloss, and I realized that I touched something that was wet, so um, I actually ended up getting other colors in here so the painting itself is red black and white but you can see a little bit of blue because I guess there was something that was on my on that little board that I was painting on that was blue that was wet and I was very frustrated with that because 
I didn't, I couldn't figure out what it was. You'll, you'll see me, uh, check it a couple other times, but anyway, so the paint that I got from, uh, Walmart was Glidden and it was a high gloss. So, you know, again, always high gloss paint, uh, whenever I can, but I don't really like the paint itself. Um, because it just doesn't have the same density is the best word I can think of for the paint, right? So normally the, the, the gloss enamel that I use is by Dun Edwards and it's got a very, uh, it's very dense and it's very thick. So, you know, it makes the, the colors are very, uh, non-transparent, but this one that I used, it kind of separated a little bit. It was a little runnier, so it, it didn't create the same kind of effects, uh, that the black that I normally use does. But at the same time, it still wasn't bad. It just wasn't, I just wasn't as happy with it as I would have been with my normal paint. But no, no problem, not dissing Glidden or anything. I still use their metallic paints, so it just wasn't what I was expecting. So once I have kind of a thin coat of black on the back, then we move on to white. And again, I'm only using the scrubber or the these rubber squeegee because I want the I want these really thin layers here. This is I'm doing this on purpose. I want you to be able to see the colors between each layer. And I'm also not covering the whole thing in the colors because I want I want there to be pockets of the color kind of showing through where it doesn't fill the whole thing so that when the next color comes through you can kind of see it even better because some of it will be just a thin layer of paint. The other ones will just be, uh, you know, there will be those little pockets where the colors aren't overlapping. So it gives you more true color. Also, what I'm doing here is that the rubber squeegee is very good at um, drying the paint out because I think it's I think it's the friction from the rubber at the end of the squeegee that it makes the paint dry really fast. So it's, it's great because it, again, I couldn't figure out what the blue was that I was touching. So I was so frustrated with that. But anyway, uh, so I couldn't figure out, or I mean, sorry, the, the rubber squeegee just makes the paint dry very fast because of the, the friction. So that's what I was trying to do here was I was, in order to just shoot this video in one go, I was trying to get the paint to dry uh, in one one sitting. So I just kept scraping it until the paint was worked in, until it was dry, and then moved on. Um, also, that rubber squeegee I got at, like, the dollar store. You can get them at the dollar store. You can get them at Ace Hardware. I may have already mentioned that, but, uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, so then we move on to a bright red. The red that I'm using is, is called Hot Jazz. Uh, again, I use gloss enamel, so you, you'd have to find a similar color, but I don't know what color would be similar, uh, with acrylic paint, so I couldn't say. Um, but really here, I'm just trying to cover the whole piece in the red because, you know, again, I want, I wanted a full kind of minimalist piece here where you could see the different colors, but you could, you know, and there was different layers and everything. Um, but they kind of came through. So really what I'm doing here is just kind of working them in, making sure that the whole thing is covered. Um, but I didn't like having this little gap down here, like I guess at the bottom. Uh, so I'm actually going to make it a little darker because it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as dark as I wanted it. So added a little bit of black. We're going to go over it one more time with the black just to kind of work it in. Um, although I think I used too much black on this one because it was a lot. <laughs> um, but at the same time, again, I wanted a full, a piece that kind of took up the full thing. So, I mean, it, it worked out fine, but yeah. So we go over it with the black here just to kind of darken it a little bit just because it was it was a little lighter than I was looking for. Um, and then I believe we finish with red. I don't think I add any more white. I can't quite remember. Um, but here, but once I added the black, then it was like too dark. Well, I guess we did add white. Eh, well, you know, I'm recording this days after I actually did it. So I'm surprising myself. Um, but what's kind of cool is that normally I hate when the colors mix 
And so I'm trying, you know, I try to get the colors to dry before I do anything. Um, but here, since the black was still wet and I added the white, it, some of the parts became gray. So that wasn't too bad uh, because it it brought down kind of the luster of the whole thing. Um, but my focus for the piece was red, so that's why I'm adding it here. Um, and I believe this is actually the final layer because, again, red is kind of the focus here. So adding it at the... yeah, it is. So um, once I add this final layer of red, then it was pretty much done. And I was pretty happy with it afterwards. So honestly, I mean, it's a very simple abstract that you can make, uh, like a minimal, very minimalist kind of design. Um, if you want the whole thing to be, you know, these colors, you can do this. Um, but overall, once once I had that where the uh, the colors were worked in, then I was pretty happy with it. So, I mean, this is the final piece, and I was pretty happy with it. Uh, I think I called it, like, my bleeding heart or something like that. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, uh, you know, consider liking, rating, sharing, subscribing, all that cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you guys in another video. So take care.